Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Joey from the So Wizard Podcast. Proud members of the Pulse Podcast Networks. Tix Blitz is the official ticket provider of the Pulse Podcast Network. Check it out. Have you been searching for the best ticket deals around? Well, look no further. With TixFlix, the price you see is the price you pay. And TixFlix just happens to have over $6 billion in ticket inventory just waiting for you. They absolutely mean it when they say every ticket, every venue, everywhere. And you can save even more with promo code PULSE in all caps to save you 5% off your total purchase. Just go to TixFlix.com and click the search bar. Search events based on your geographic location. Pick the show you want, and bam, it's showtime. Sporting events, Broadway shows, concerts, and more with TixFlix.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for the email newsletter so you can stay up to date on the latest news and savings with TixFlix. That's TixFlix.com. T-I-S-D-L-I-T-Z.com. Every ticket, every venue, everywhere. Hey, this is Seb from Dinner and the Podcast, and you're listening to That's So Raven. I mean, So Wizard. Broadcasting very fast and very dangerous from the planet Malastair, you are listening to So Wizard. You are thinking, you said people are going to die? The only podcast to make the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. There'll be no one to stop us this time. What's going on, everybody? It is time for episode number 242 of the So Wizard podcast. I'm your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-host this week, first off, the expert, Mr. Marquis Marcellus Reagans. Yo, what is going on, everybody? And the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield, is away on assignment this week. So filling in, we've got... Rough, rugged, and raw, straight from the streets of New York City. From dinner and a podcast, it's Mr. Steven. Ina Selly. Ina Selly. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived my whole life with people not being able to pronounce my name, so don't worry about it. It's no big I deal. I tried my best and failed miserably. <laughs> no worries. Every teacher I've ever had is, has failed miserably just as, uh, just as bad. Excellent. You are listening to So Wizard Podcast. Three friends discuss the world of nerd podcasting weekly on the Pulse Podcast Network. This week, we've got some nerdy news to discuss, and then we're going to review the newest movie from Jordan Peele, Us. But before we get into that, let's see how everyone's doing this week. Steve, welcome to the podcast. Tell us all about you and dinner in a podcast. Oh, boy, all about me. So uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. This is the Second time we've attempted this. I was supposed to come on for the Creed 2 review, and I never made it on there, so I apologize for that. Um, but thanks for having me on. Uh, I've had you guys on our show, Dinner and a Podcast, uh, each of you once before. So you guys were great. Thanks for uh, coming on. That was awesome. Um, I live in New York City. I am a teacher by trade. Uh, I teach science to high school and, and college kids. But on the side, I, um, I do a podcast with my three best friends, and it's called Dinner and a Podcast. We uh, we talk a lot of the stuff that So Wizard would talk about, but uh, we do uh, one more of a comedy show, I think. But at this point, we started off being more of like a review show and a comic book and movies and stuff like that. But we kind of merged into just a conversational uh, kind of podcast. But it's uh, it's very entertaining, very funny. Uh, we interact with our fans a lot. You can check us out on iTunes and Spotify and everywhere else you can find uh, a podcast. Uh, we also do a little comic book show every week. Me and one of the hosts, Joe, does a, a comic book show called Comic Book Corner which is on the same channel as Dinner and a Podcast. You can check us out there. And if you like So Wizard, uh, you'll like us. So check us out. Yep, I absolutely agree, man. I love your show. You guys find a way to just tell these incredibly ridiculous stories that uh, <laughs> that even though the episodes are like really long, those stories are very interesting. So yeah, I, I'm a big fan of your show, man. And, and I definitely recommend uh, uh, anyone out there listening to So Wizard to definitely give uh, Dinner and a Podcast a try. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I listen every week, and even though your show, we like to bust your balls about how long the show is, They've I still listen. Shorter. <laughs> they have. I, they're under two hours now, but yeah. uh, I do listen to the whole show. So, 
Oh, thank you. It's the best they're, compliment I can give you. Thank you. I've, I've always wanted to be under like an hour and a half. And then some of the guys in the show are just like, let it go as long as, as it has to go. And then we had people that told us that like, you know, I'm, I'm on a three hour commute and I can get through the whole show and I really love it. And that's all they needed to keep it a long show. So I try my best to keep it under two hours. Just takes a couple of days for me to get through it. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's like an audio book. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you on. Thanks for coming in. Mark Ellis, tell us, Mark Ellis Regans, how are you this week? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I've been, uh, I caught up with a, a movie that we, uh, we talked a little bit about the Shang-Chi movie that was happening from mm-hmm. Marvel Studios and uh, a good friend of the show, Adam Wallyhawk hit me up on Twitter and told me that uh, the director's other movie was actually on Amazon. So I got to check it out. It's called uh, Short Term 12 and uh, has Brie Larson in it. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield. Sold. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and she's way hotter in this movie than she is in uh, in Captain Marvel. Is such a thing even possible? Yes. Well, it, it at least for me anyway. I don't know. Uh, but the, I don't know if you'll like the movie. It's, it's very uh, slice of life drama uh but it's yeah <laughs> but it's really good it's really really good and it's done really well and it, it gave me a good idea of what the director's filming style is like uh he also wrote the movie too uh which blew me away uh it's basically about a, a girl who works at a at a uh, foster care home uh that takes care of kids uh up until they're around 17 years old and then they you know once they turn 18 they get they get to leave the place, but it's about. And they go into Kumite t- underground tournaments. <laughs> that's it's <laughs> not quite the same thing. That, no. that might be that might be the spinoff, the short term uh, cinematic universe. Uh, but it, it's a really good movie. It's a, a a really good serious dramatic movie, and it shows that Brie Larson is an amazing actress. She was definitely not given enough good material in Captain Marvel, uh, but this movie is really good. If you want to check it out, it's on Amazon Prime. It's called Short Term Twelve. And the guy that made that is going to be doing the Shang-Chi movie for Marvel, hopefully. Allegedly. Allegedly. Right. I will definitely check that out because I've only seen her in Captain Marvel and in Kong Skull Island. And I was not impressed by her. And I know I should be because she's won an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. So I I really need to see her in something that she shines in. So I'll give that a shot. Yeah, you should definitely do that. It's really good. But to be fair, you know who else has an Academy Award? Who's that? (laughs) Three Six Mafia. Three Six Mafia. (laughs) That's true. And a Suicide Squad, so you know, like, <laughs> not the they, Suicide Squad, just Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, and so Joey, how are you doing, man? I am fucking tired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, my usual work schedule is is brutal. Um, and then I didn't rest on my day off on Wednesday. I literally like came home, got myself cleaned up. I had to go back to work for a meeting. <laughs> So, which was a very well scheduled meeting for people that work third shift to go back to work like two hours later. And then I went uh, out with uh, Jay Money from uh, Not Another Nerdy Podcast and S Dog, who's our friend um, who had moved away across the country, but he comes back to visit. And we went to uh, Gillette Stadium, the Patriots Hall of Fame, and a uh, Patriot place and checked out the Hall of Fame and the stadium. And then uh, we ate. And I, the only reason I bring up what we ate is that we had bacon cheeseburger Rangoons. Oh, man, that sounds good. What's they were like, like crab Rangoons from uh, like Chinese food. It's like a square, like a triangle. Oh, OK. Yeah, okay. okay. But instead of crab, it had bacon cheeseburger <laughs> inside. So. That's pretty awesome. It was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> you can just take a, a tour of the stadium whenever you want. Well, you can walk around the outside and like see in, but then you can go to the Hall of Fame, which is pretty awesome. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, so we had a good time, and then, but I didn't get any rest that day. Instead of so, then I worked the last three days and came home. Uh, I didn't get any sleep because I had stuff to do. I went to see us. I uh, worked some more, and then uh, I had to work my other job today. And now I'm here, and that's it. Gotcha. That's the excitement of my life. Is <laughs> bacon cheeseburger Rangoons is probably the most exciting <laughs> thing that's happened in like months to me. So. Awesome. But enough about us. Let's talk about us. Mark Ellis, why don't you tell the listeners out there where they can find more So Wizard Podcast? 
All right. So everybody can go to SoWizardPodcast.com where you will find new episodes every week. Uh, you'll also find some movie reviews from yours truly. You'll find Netflix and Amazon streaming picks from our buddy, the awesome Adam Mollyhawk. Uh, you'll also find our merchandise there so you can purchase some of our T-shirts and look good while you're representing the show. Uh, another great way to support our show is by doing your Amazon shopping through the link that we keep right on the website. Click on that big A. You do your Amazon shopping, you receive your products, and that way you'll be helping out So Is Your Podcast. Uh, you can also find our social media links there. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review while you're there. Uh, you can also find us on a Stitcher Radio app for your tablet or smartphone, Podbean, Google Play Music. Uh, you can stream our show through Spotify, and you can also stream our show through Podcoin, where listening to podcasts can also help you earn a little bit of money. Uh, you can support our show through our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash so was a podcast. Uh, receive bonus material from us uh, every month. Uh, you can also uh, check out our YouTube channel, where we're putting up new videos every week. Shout out to all of our podcasting buddies all over the world. Back to you, Joey. Sonic's arms are not freaking blue. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, Marcellus, lay it on us. What is going on in the world of nerd this week? Yo, pump it up. It's time for the news. Yo, we getting ready to bring you the news, boy. All right, so this week in nerdy news, a uh, couple of small uh, headlines I wanted to talk about. Now, are you guys fans of Bill and the Bill and Ted series at all, uh, Steve? I haven't seen it since it came out. Wow! So I don't remember it too much, to be honest with you. What about you, Joey? I fucking love those movies. <laughs> I've actually watched both of them in the last like few months uh, with my son. So, oh, nice, nice. How old's your son? Uh, Ten. Do you like him? Yeah, uh, he yeah he really liked them a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw those movies in the theaters and watched them a thousand times on uh, VHS when I had them. Uh, yes, I saw the f- I saw them both in the theater, but the first one I saw with my family when I was young when it came out, and my it, my dad hated that movie. Wow, like more than life itself. <laughs> like he st- would st- he'll still talk about it. If you're like, what's the worst movie you ever saw? And he'll talk about how much he hated <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and all the shitty movies I made him go see in the movie theater, like Breaking Two. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that hurt him, the Bill and Ted one. Yeah, he hated that fucking movie so much. I don't know why. I thought it's fucking amazing, but okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe just didn't like history or I don't maybe know. <laughs> didn't like Joan of Arc. Yeah, exactly. Stokrates. <laughs> uh, so they did announce that uh, there was ten. There was plans to make a uh, Bill and Ted three, uh, and this week we got a little video from Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves talking about how the movie is pretty much going to be coming out august of 2020 they put a lot of allegedly's and hopefully's in their statements so it's still not official uh but having those two guys announce it for summer 2020 seems like they're heading in the right direction so uh me and joy are both big fans of it steve do you think this is something that you would want to check out in the future uh bill and ted three uh absolutely i definitely would um because i'm a huge kind of reese fan I'd, i'd have to revisit the first uh bill and ted's uh, there's two of them, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, this is this is the third one. I'd have to revisit those two before I go see it. But yeah, I would definitely check it out. Why not? Nice, Joey. How about you, man? Are you psyched that this is actually allegedly happening next summer? Uh, I think it's happening. If if Keanu and Alex Winter are going to film a video together announcing it, it's a done deal at this point. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm excited, cautiously. I mean, you know what? It could suck. I mean, what if it's terrible? Right, like uh, Anchorman two. You know, a lot of people or, are. Star Wars prequels, uh, I, or I like or the movies. Jurassic World, Fallen oh, Kingdom. Dude, <laughs> the Jurassic World movie fucking sucks. Can I curse on the show? Yes. Oh, as man, much as does you that want. Suck that show. Oh, that movie was the worst. Poor Chris Pratt. And what what other franchises have come back and been terrible? Um, I'm, I'm sure there's many more that we could come up with. So it, it's hard. It's, uh, Ghostbusters. There you go. Ghostbusters yeah. 2006. Answer the call. Yeah. Okay. Well, that doesn't count. No, that, that's kind of a reboot. We'll we'll have to hold out until Ghostbusters 3 comes out to <laughs> fully judge that movie, judge that franchise. 
So, yes, I, I'm excited, but I am cautiously uh, excited because this could be fucking awful. Because even though you want to believe that Keanu Reeves doesn't do bad movies because of how awesome John Wick is. Yeah. <laughs> he also made whatever that fucking movie is where he clones his family. Replicas. Oh, I yeah. Tried see- I tried seeing that. It was in the movie for like a day <laughs> and then it was gone. It made like a dollar seventy five and they like immediately dropped it as fast as possible. Yeah. One of you guys was on my show when that when we actually re- reviewed the trailer for that. Yeah, I was just about to say that I was on air. Uh, uh when it was they, Mark. Okay. Yeah, they dropped and it. And we were on. excited about it. Yeah, yeah. It, it seemed like it was gonna be kind of cool. And then like right. a, a year went by and the movie still hadn't come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was at New York Comic Con that year that you were there, Mark, that I wasn't mm-hmm. um promoting it, and then it got shelved for like a year and a half. Yep, and then it went to the theaters, and then was out of the theaters. So it must not be good at all. Potential uh, future, I hate you now. Watch, yeah, maybe, maybe. Can it be possibly be worse than Cool Cat Saves the Kids? <laughs> Nothing could be worse than Cool Cat Saves the Kids. I'm sorry, that's true. That's why we paint on walls, Mark. Nobody <laughs> loves us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'm psyched for Bill and Ted Three. I'm 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 circling a calendar right now. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for the potential metal soundtrack. That's all I care about. There you go. There you go. All right. So uh, if you are a big fan of the Star Wars animated TV show, The Clone Wars, and you have Netflix, if you haven't finished watching it, now's the time to do it. Because come April, Star Wars, The Clone Wars is out of there for Netflix. It means you're going to have to wait until it premieres, hopefully on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I have not finished the show yet. I've watched probably like the first couple of seasons, but I, I keep hearing how awesome it is, and I keep meaning to check it out. Uh, so now I only have a god like a <laughs> like a week, a week or so to finish this. Uh, yeah, one week <laughs> as we record this, as the crow flies. So I'm psyched. I'm psyched. To, that's what I'm going to be doing for the next week. So yeah, Star Wars Clone Wars. Are you guys thinking about finishing it up on Netflix, or is this something that you would be you'd rather wait till it comes out in a Disney Plus streaming? Joey, um, I have a confession to make. I have never fucking watched this. You haven't watched like one episode of it. <laughs> Uh, like I've tried a few times. Everybody keeps saying, oh, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. It gets so much better in the later seasons. It's so awesome. And I sit down and I watch like 10 minutes of it and I, it's, just, I can't do it. The animation is shit. And it's just like, this is garbage. And I like, can't watch it. I, I don't know. I don't know why. It's not like I don't like Star Wars and they make fucking kids after Star Wars characters. <laughs> right. Like I like Star Wars. Trust me. <laughs> so I don't know why I can't get into it. I don't know. So I guess I'll I'll never watch it because I'm not going to watch six seasons of it in seven days. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, what about you, man? Is there any interest of uh, catching up on this show before it leaves? I am 1,000% going to be getting Disney Plus, so I'm in no rush to finish it. <laughs> um, I'm like you, Mark. I, I've, I've watched, you know, I, I it's like I, I get on board and then I kind of fall off for a little bit and I yeah. get back on board and I fall off for a little bit. So I'm in no rush to really finish it, but I'm going to be getting Disney Plus a thousand percent. So I can just watch it on there. Nice. Oh, yeah. What What is it about Disney Plus that has you all uh, gung ho for it? Uh, it's, it's Disney. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's I'm it. a Enough Disney said. <laughs> fanatic. Um, if anybody ever listens to our show, you'll find that we do like three Disney shows a year at mm-hmm. least. Uh, we always do a show about the park because uh, we always, every year we go to the parks. Um, sometimes every year, to, every year, dude, sometimes Fuck off. <laughs> I have a, I have a timeshare. I don't have a Disney timeshare. I have a, like a, another company timeshare. That's like a mile away from Disney world. Oh, wow. Um, so I get to, I don't have to pay for a hotel, you know, cause I, I got the timeshare. So, uh, we can go a little bit more than we'd like to, or actually just as much as we like to. But, um, one of the other co-hosts has a Disney vacation club. So he's there every year. He, he goes like three times a year. Jeez. He can he can break up his points. It's a point system with Disney Vacation Club. Yeah, and you you can break it. He breaks it up like you know. So he has three trips every year, which is pretty cool. So um, just the fact that Disney is having their own streaming service with every single bit of content that they've ever made on it, so I'm totally in. Nice, nice. I'm just getting it for the uh, Marvel TV shows. That's what that's what I want. Which Marvel TV shows are you pr- all, uh, particularly all interested them. in? All of them, <laughs> okay. especially the. Uh, the Bucky Barnes and Falcon team up show. Oh yeah, the God, original ones. Yeah, I'm ready. yeah. I'm ready to take my yeah, money I'm now. Gonna, I'm excited about those Star Wars shows, those live action shows. Yeah, the Mandalorian one. Uh, mm-hmm. God, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. Yeah. 
All right. Okay. So then we got a little bit of casting news too. Uh, they will not let this Masters of the Universe movie die. Uh, <laughs> it's still supposedly happening uh, by directors Aaron and Adam Nee. Uh, and we got a little bit of casting news. Noah Centineo, a uh, gentleman who I'm not familiar with, but I guess he's on a TV show, a Netflix show called To All the Boys I've Loved. Uh, he is rumored to be playing He-Man. I know nothing about this kid at all, uh, except for that he looks a lot like Mark Ruffalo, which is, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if I can buy him as He-Man. But the He-Man movie is still moving forward. Uh, so let, let's get your guys' takes on it. Steve, how do you feel about the Masters of the Universe movie still happening after all of these years? I would like to see a Masters of the Universe movie okay. because the the one that they actually made was a friggin' shit show. <laughs> um, so I would like to see them do it with today's technology. We've come so far with technology these days. It's unbelievable the stuff that we have on the screen nowadays. But uh, I think they would do a much better job of it you know, today. E- e- even if it sucks, right? It'll look tw- a thousand times better. So right there, it's an upgrade. This kid, though, I'm, j- I'm just taking a look at him now. He looks nothing like He-Man. Right. Like, he looks like a Jonas brother, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, picture him with like a straight blonde wig, though. Is that, does that work any better? No, because no. he doesn't look... <laughs> You know, people with blonde hair have, you know, light eyes and fair complexion. This kid looks like a, he looks like a Goomba. <laughs> <laughs> the mushrooms that Mario jumps on? Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. No, I, I don't know. But maybe, maybe it'll work out. I don't know. I mean, that's one thing that I've come to the, you know, the stark conclusion of is like, you can't have expectations going into these movies because ne- you're never going to have your expectations reached. Mm-hmm. So just to try to keep an open mind when you're going into these comic book movies and the things that, not even comic book movies, just the, the stuff that you love as a kid or your nostalgia, you got to kind of have an open mind with this stuff because if, if you don't, you go in there and it's, you know, it sucks right off the bat just because it's in your head. That's not what you expect, you know? Yeah, yeah. The internet loves this kid. So, you know, at least he'll get all of the teeny boppers in there. So for that, what that, show that's was he in? Uh, to all the boys I loved. I have no idea what the it's hell that is. It's a Netflix show that went okay. crazy like last year. Oh, okay. Uh, Joey, Masters, Yo. of, Masters of the Universe movie without Dolph Lundgren with this Noah kid. How do you feel? I, I, I don't know. I looked at pictures of him and I don't see He-Man at all. And I don't mean that in a weird like I'm going to make 50 YouTube videos about Brie Larson way. <laughs> I just mean like, <laughs> like I just like look at him like I don't he doesn't look at like him at all. Right? <laughs> like he doesn't. He's not jacked. He's not blonde. Like what? <laughs> Chris Hemsworth would have been awesome. Yeah, I don't think he would do it though after being Thor for so long. But so I don't know. I guess we'll have to see how he looks in a pink shirt. But <laughs> exactly, get him a a, um, a, bowl, a blonde bowl cut in a, a pink shirt. Is that like kosher? For the, the year 2019, that like He Man is manly, but because he wears a pink shirt, no one knows it's him. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to change I'm not, that. I'm not, st- I'm not touching that. <laughs> That's right. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag not my Prince Adam. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. I mean, what expectation is there for this? Like, they don't make the toys in, in a mainstream way. You can't walk into a store and buy He Man toys, there's no cartoon. Uh, other than people our age, like do kids even know what the fuck He Man is? No. Oh, and the last yeah. He Man movie was shite. So as much as I love it, because it's like it's awesome shite, but it's shite. Yeah. And so what? It's you know, it's like if when they announce a new Alien movie, like why even bother getting upset about it? Right. <laughs> the, the the last good Alien movie came out when I was nine. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's nothing to get upset about. I'm not dying on that hill. Yeah, they're strictly making this movie for us, right? No, no, <laughs> no, no, they're, I mean, they're trying to get I mean, like a whole new demographic for this for this property. No one's going to care. You know, young kids aren't going to care about this. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. They, they tried putting the cartoons back on Netflix. You, tr- you try watching any of those old ones. Oh, they're bad. Oof, they're rough. I could still watch Thundercats. I could still sit down and watch an original episode of Thundercats and enjoy it. But He-Man was was a little much. I uh, I have multiple times in my life tried to get my son to watch He-Man with me, and uh-huh. every single time he's just been like, "This is really cringy. I don't want to watch." This. <laughs> yeah, my son is six, and he we sat down and watched our first episode of uh, G1 Transformers, and he actually liked it a lot. He actually wanted to watch another episode, mm-hmm. so that was fun. Nice. He did, he did not like the original Voltron though, which was no. very heartbreaking because that's my favorite of all time. Right. I, I had the same experience. Both my kids obsessed with the new Netflix Voltron. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, "Hey, check out the old one." They they really couldn't take they couldn't stop making fun of it. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, "Oh, well, you know what? When I was a kid, was a big show that I used to watch. A huge, expansive storyline anime was uh, Robotech. So we watched like forty seconds of it, and they were both were like, This is whack. Wow. Stop watching it. <laughs> it's a different I died time, a man. little inside. <laughs> it's a it's a different time. It's a different generation, dude. I guess so. Just wait till Toby Maguire makes that Robotech movie. <laughs> Starring the Jonas Brothers. That's right. <laughs> or this kid's year three thousand. <laughs> all, right, all right. So so then we had a few trailers also drop this week. Uh let's start with uh speaking of Netflix, let's start with the Stranger Three Stranger Things. Stranger Things season three trailer. Uh we got a little bit of uh footage of the kids coming back from summer camp and this is going to be happening it looks like during the 4th of july uh during the time of the 4th of july the, they didn't really do any kind of sneaking around or playing it close to the chest for this one they put a lot of footage including a big shot of the monster at the end of the trailer uh, so what did you guys think of this first good look at stranger things season three uh joey let's start with you um it's yeah i mean i love stranger things love stranger things uh season one and two it's the only show at this point my entire family can watch is like all four of us watch the show um when they drop the new season it's like a race between all of us to binge it as fast as humanly possible Mm -hmm. um so i'm super excited i will say though honestly i would have been happy if, if it ended with season two yeah, you don't want to. You don't need any more of the story for from now. No, n- not that I. No, I want more of the story. I'd take supernatural length of seasons. Fifteen <laughs> seasons is great, but in in terms of the actual storyline, it's bittersweet because now it's like they're all grown up and they don't like each other anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I I like. I just want to believe that you know, Mike and Eleven are dating forever, and <laughs> <laughs> Toothless is. Uh, styling his hair with hairspray and Great. everybody's happy in the end. <laughs> that, that's where I was glad where it left off. And, and now actually everyone is awful again. But I, I can understand why Mike, you know, dumped 11 cause you don't want to stick your dick in crazy. You know? <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> At least once. <laughs> At least once. <laughs> All right, Steve, what about you, man? How'd you feel about this trailer? Um, I, I want to echo Joe's feelings with it a little bit. I think it should, it could have ended at after season two. I like things ending on a high note. Yeah. Um, but with that said, like, like, like Joe said, I'll take a hundred years of stranger things, but I was utterly confused by this trailer to be very honest with you. Like I had no clue what was going on kind of because like, where do you take it after, after season two? But, uh, the vision, the visuals are great. Yeah. There was a, there was an article when I, I, I brought up YouTube uh, not YouTube, uh, Yahoo the other day, and it said um, Stranger Things channels 1985 in the new trailer, and I'm like, yeah, spoiler, the whole fucking show's in the game. Like, <laughs> why is that a big surprise to you? I couldn't, I couldn't believe that that was their headline. Uh, I like the soundtrack; sounded cool. They sound they started off with some Motley Crue. It, it looked good. I mean, it looked it looked alright. I just like it. I just don't want it to be ruined. I rather, you know, I just want it to be good. If it's good, then carry on. But we'll see. But like, I was, I, I totally didn't know what was going on in this trailer. Like there were characters that I didn't know, which is good because then you get a chance to to you know get get to know new characters. And there were some old ones, right? There was Billy, right? Wasn't the wasn't that Billy near the pool? Yeah, yep. Like a lifeguard. That's that <laughs> seemed kind of cool. It's probably uh, banging think, Mike's mom. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah ho- hopefully we'll get us to get to see that scene this year. Um, that big monster at the end looked pretty neat, I guess, because uh, you got to outdo the demi gorgon, right? Right. But um, but yeah. I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm I'm totally excited for it because it's one of my favorite shows of the past ten years. Probably in my top five shows of the past ten years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I am very excited for it. I think it it looks really really cool and it looks very expansive too. Looks like the story is going to go in a whole bunch of different directions. Uh, so I'm down for that. I'm down for that. I'm definitely going to try to binge the whole thing uh, as soon as it comes out. Did you hear about the spinoff show that we were getting? <laughs> no. Stick your dick in some crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Except for this one's going to take Sorry. place in the 90s. That's right. <laughs> oh, is it really? No. No. Oh, <laughs> oh Sticky Dick and some Crazy will be in the 90s. That's right. <laughs> we'll see the result of that with their kids. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just hoping they, they, they have their plan, they have their storyline set, they have their set number of seasons, and they stick the landing every year. 
so it can be a great TV show and not just a good TV show. Do you great. think they bring back that um, that girl from season two, um, the one of the other number girls? I think they will eventually, but I don't think that they'll. I think they'll pivot away from whatever they were planning with that because there was such a negative backlash to it. Well, just because it just didn't fit. Not that it was bad. I just don't think it fit in the storyline. Mm. I liked it. I didn't have a problem with it, but some people really hated it. So, yeah, I liked it. I, I thought it was actually pretty good. As nice as it gets, something a little bit different from the same old, same old. I would have liked to see more of that person, to be honest with you. I can't remember her name at all. Um, eight. Eight. Um, I, I thought that you could have you could have built a whole show around that idea, you know. But I thought it kind of it, it kind of just pumped the brakes on the show a little bit. Like as you're watching it, it, it kind of just, it, it slowed the, the momentum of yep. the show a little bit. That's all. I just want it to, you know, be a show like breaking bad or the shield where every single season is awesome. And you can just say, Hey, you like this type of show? Watch this. As opposed to being like, Oh, you want to watch lost? Well, the first season is good. And the first half of the second season is good, but all of season three is really terrible. And it's pretty bad for the first half of season four. And then like, that that's not a good a great show. That's a good show, but it's not a great show because I have to quantify everything about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I think Asterix, a lot of Marvel shows are like that, though. Yeah, you know, Daredevil is probably the only one that was solid for three seasons. Oh, I would disagree there. I think uh, I would I would say season two had a had a hitch in it. I think it was a couple episodes too long. Season one was great. I think season three was the best one. But I mean, Luke Cage halfway through both seasons. I kind of fell off. They were Iron great. Fist, you watched all of it in one night. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I don't think I don't. I wouldn't have made it through the night if I did. Like physically, made it through the night. All right. So uh, the next trailer I want to talk about is uh, one that we've kind of mentioned on the show before uh, that it was happening and we couldn't believe it. But uh, we got our first look at the poster and the trailer. It's Dora the Explorer, Dora and a City of Lost Gold. Or uh, in the the Golden City, I don't even remember the name of it. Uh, but we got our first look at the footage of it. So, what did you guys think of? I mean, I'm saying this. Dora the Explorer, the movie, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> I just want to say the first thing that the poster came out and it says Explorer is her sec is her middle name. And I was like, so her name is Dora Explorer the Explorer. <laughs> the fuck name that chick? <laughs> but the uh, the trailer looked um. I don't know. It's weird. It's like, who is this movie for? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looked fine. It looked like a uh, generic. It, and, you know, we've talked about this in the show before, Mark, that what's missing in movies these days are those movies for like not little kids, like not animated movies for little kids, but not PG-13 rated movies for teenagers that are OK for kids to watch. Like there's no movies for kids like i don't know eight to eleven to watch that aren't like baby movies and this seemed like it was kind of trying to be that type of movie but that's not the audience that's going to watch a dora movie <laughs> right a dora movie's like three-year-old kids is that a, is that like a new epidemic now that we don't have like we had movies for when we were eight to eleven we had like the mighty ducks and right and when like we were that. kids we had all those kind of movies yep sam lot you know and like I think you're right. Like I sat down to watch Bumblebee with my son, and he's like, "Daddy, this is a grown-up movie," and he's <laughs> six. And I'm like, "Yeah, I guess it is." I was like, "But it's cool, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, some parts." He's like, "But there are guns," and I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." Oh, and, yikes! Yeah, I was like, "All right, I guess I'm turning what? this off. Don't don't go to school and tell them I'm showing you gun movies." But <laughs> well, you can uh, come over to my house and watch the raid with me and my sons. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I never thought about that. You know, there there is there's no good movies for for that age group anymore. You're, and I'm not even talking about like right, stuff that might right. challenge you a little bit. Like, yeah, like I would I would say Monster Squad is like one of my favorite movies that falls in that range. But mm-hmm. that's I think that's a little more challenging a movie too because it's actually scary. Um, yeah, but there, there's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. cartoons and Marvel movies, and even the cartoons. Like the uh, many many jokes go over the heads of of my kids in like a Disney movie or um, those uh, Minions movies or things like that. Like the jokes are not for the kids who they're trying to sell it to. Sometimes mm-hmm. forget what I was watching. I think I was watching Teen Titans the other day. My son loves Teen Titans Go, and 
I think Beast Boy or some, or Robin was was a dentist in this scene. And he was talking about like malpractice lawsuits. And I'm like, my son's not getting these jokes. I know he's not getting these jokes. <laughs> See, what did you think of the trailer, man? Do you think it's something that might be interesting uh, you, to a certain group of audience? You guys texted you when you know you guys gave me kind of show notes kind of to prepare for the show and yeah. i double taked when <laughs> that's I the that. most prepared we've ever been before we recorded just so you know because <laughs> there was a guest like when you, you sent me a couple of trailers and i and i originally i thought it was the trailer for that new um mexican horror movie oh yeah, yeah, yeah. la loria or something yeah i can't pronounce it this ball and I was ex- <laughs> yeah and i was excited to to watch that and then I go back and I'm like, Dora, huh? And I didn't like, I didn't think it was Dora the Explorer. So I I was like, all right, I wonder what this is. And I click it and it was fucking Dora the Explorer. (laughs) (laughs) And and I hate the cartoon. I absolutely hate that stupid cartoon. Uh, And then I saw this and I I don't, it it looks ridiculous, but, but it, maybe it fits into that eight to 11 year old movie category. Yeah. If it was like, if it was like titled something else. It was yeah. like Agent Cody Banks. Yeah. But you know? no fucking eight to ten year old is gonna go see Dora the Explorer. It's a baby show. Yeah. And it was too but like you said, it's too much it looks too mature for a for a baby show. Because she's a baby. In the in the cartoon, she's a she's like what, five? Yeah, then they had a second series where she's in middle school, I think. Oh, but okay. My daughter had aged out by then and my son doesn't like it. So um Right. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. This looks like it's going to be a megaton nuclear bomb flop. Yeah, of (laughs) course. Of course. They got that one character who's just like, of course, Dora knows the monkey. Of course, Dora has a backpack. Of course, Dora is weird. You know, I was like, I don't know, man. This is this is weird. It's going to be a big flop. Just don't look up the uh, the 4chan memes about it because I get a visit from the FBI. Oh, Jesus. God, no, 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 no. The monkey looked uh, terrible too, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, the CG is not good. <laughs> yeah, like I, I've seen Planet of the Apes. I know they're. I know that technology exists for like good monkeys. <laughs> what are they doing? You want them to use the entire budget of the movie just on boots? <laughs> yes. And and is D, is Diego like nineteen in the in the cartoon? I thought he was younger than her. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't get too deep into the Dora <laughs> lore. I just know that he hangs out with baby jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, a very irritating backpack that just that's right. backpack, backpack, backpack. That's right. And then they ask you a question and stare at the screen for 30 seconds. And no one moves or makes a sound. <laughs> do you think they're going to go in and out of Spanish and English like they do on the show? I hope so. I was just, I'm still angry that her shirt fits, though. It does, it's not canon. Oh my God. No. <laughs> she looks like a badass, though, man. She freaking beats people up. I know. What little little toddler is going to watch this movie? <laughs> They're going to have nightmares. It's like Tomb Raider, Dora the Explorer edition. Yeah, that's what it kind of reminded me of, like a, a cross between like Tomb Raider and Spy Kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looked like they were trying to go for that like Jumanji vibe. Oh uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe. All right. So then, uh, so we'll we'll <laughs> we'll we'll come back to this movie after it comes out. See how it does at the box office. I, I'm promising our listeners right now. It comes out the same day as Hobbs and Shaw, and we're going to do both of those movies on the show. <laughs> we're trying to decide which one is going to be Patreon exclusive and which one is going to be on the actual show. So get at us if you aren't a Patreon and you want to hear one of those because that might be the deciding factor. Yeah, I want to know which one's going to have the higher body count. I'm thinking Dora. <laughs> I want to know how embarrassing it's going to be for me to go to the movies by myself and see Dora the Explorer. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to go it come out. One for Dora the Explorer, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show up in a trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Enough of this. All right. So then the, the last trailer I want to talk about is the new one from Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and Margot Robbie. And this is being billed as Tarantino's ninth film. So I guess he's only going to make ten. I think this is gonna, gonna, only going to be one more after this one. But it has that Tarantino flair. It has. It looks like it's going to be because the movie is about a movie actor that he's going to get to play in different genres within that movie. You know, there's a little bit of Kung Fu, Western, uh, detective story. It's going to be... Looks like there's going to be a lot of different genres that he gets to play with. I'm a huge Tarantino fan. I haven't caught the last movie he did the hateful eight 
I'm a little bit behind, but this movie looks really good. I think Brad Pitt looks like he's doing this awesome Brad Pitt, and uh, I think the movie looks really cool. So what did you guys think of the trailer, uh, Steve? Uh, three of my favorite movie things happens all in one movie, Di- DiCaprio, Pitt, and Tarantino. I love all three of those um, names. Yeah. Uh, I'm a huge Tarantino fan. Uh, Hateful Eight was, was, was great, by the way. You should definitely check it out. Um, he, he never disappoints, and he hasn't disappointed in a long time. I love DiCaprio. Can't get enough of him. And Brad Pitt, just friggin', he's just charming as hell in everything he does. And, and then you add Margot Robbie to the mix, right? Yeah. Um, if, if, that, if those three things, if Tarantino, Pitt, and DiCaprio didn't get you in, then they just throw in one of the hottest women on the planet. And uh, you got me, hundred percent. I don't even know what the movie's about. It just looks, it looks cool. It looks great. Mm-hmm. Hey, right, Jerry, what about you, man? What'd you think of that trailer? Um, it looks really cool. And uh, anything Tarantino makes, uh, I'm in. Like, it, it doesn't matter what the subject matter is going to be. Like, if he's making a movie, I want to watch it. So, yeah. it really, it doesn't even matter. Uh, Brad Pitt fighting Bruce Lee, <laughs> fucking hell yeah, I'm in. You know, well, dude, that guy looked just like Bruce Lee. I know. Plus, and like you said, Margot Robbie's in it. Come on, bro. Like, we're going to see this. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just looking at the trailer itself. The movie looks like it's going to be about three hours long. Three yeah, plus hours. isn't it about the Charles Manson murders? I know that plays a factor in it. They show that guy that does kind of look like young Charles Manson. Uh, and I know Margot Robbie is playing uh, Sharon Tate. So, yeah, I'm sure that's tied into it. But I, I have no idea what the story is about. It's fine. I just hope that the uh, they don't like use bad words as much as they do in the hateful eight. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, thank. That's thank you. I knew there was a reason why I haven't gotten around to that movie yet. I'm it's, still, you know, what? I'm still recovering it, it, from uh, Django. <laughs> I, I was gonna say it, it, it's it's not like it's a, a offensive for me as much as it would be for like say you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but god damn, every other word out of their mouths was the n word, and it was like making me really uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, Tarant- that the same movie. Yes, Hateful Eight. Is that with Sam Jackson? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I don't remember that. I guess I'm a wuss in my old age. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely said, but I, I don't remember it like being. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I could be completely wrong. I don't want to. Maybe I guess you're just used to that kind of language being used, Steve. <laughs> yeah, New York, Wu Tang <laughs> Clan. Represent. I don't know. I'm not sure when the movie is coming out, but I am psyched to go see it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for the news. Awesome. Well, we'll be back after these messages, and then we'll talk all about us. I'm Nick. And I'm Justin, and we can't believe it's already time for the 2019 live stream for The Cure. Thanks to our amazing peers, listeners, and supporters, last year we crushed our goal of $5,000 for the Cancer Research Institute. The Cancer Research Institute is funding research into immunotherapy to create a future immune to all forms of cancer. Every single cent we raise goes to them. And they're also rated over 92% on CharityNavigator.org. This year, we're aiming our sights even higher with our most ambitious event to date. Join us May 17th through the 19th on Twitch.tv slash EpicFilmGuys for 40 hours of live content from us and other amazing shows who will join us to try to reach $7,500. Please visit www.livestream for the cure for more information or to find out how you can be a part of the event. Together, we can make a difference. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is 8-Bit Ray from the Gorilla Brain Podcast, part of the Pulse Podcast Network. Did you know that you could be using this spot to advertise your company or business? Well, I've done the research, and PodcastInsights.com report that podcast listeners are loyal, affluent, and mostly college-educated, but most importantly, are five times more likely to interact with the ad they hear on their favorite podcast than an ad from any other medium. If you would like to advertise your company or brand with our network, it's simple. All you have to do is send an email to marketing at pulsepodcastnetwork.com. I'll say it one more time marketing at pulsepodcastnetwork.com and we hope to hear from you soon and we're back so we all had a chance to see the new jordan peele movie us we're going to give some initial impressions 
non-spoiler, then Markellis will drop the spoiler drop. And it's probably going to be fast because it's going to be really hard to talk about this without using spoilers. And then we're just going to spoil the crap out of it and talk all about this movie. But before we get into that, some non-spoiler impressions. Just what would you think about the movie? Steve, you're our guest. What did you think of Us? Uh, I thought it was good. It wasn't the best horror movie I, I've seen. It wasn't by any by any means the worst. It was a it was a very entertaining movie. It wasn't what I expected it to be because I'm not a big trailer guy. If, if anybody listens to the Dinner and a Podcast show, you'll know that I'm I'm I don't watch trailers. So I didn't know a lot about this movie going in. I didn't know a lot about who was in it going in. Um, and it was not what I expected at all. But I, I definitely enjoyed the movie. How about you, Mark? Yeah, I love this movie. I was very pleasantly surprised because I could not figure out what was happening, but I was along for the ride through the whole thing. Um, I thought it was really good. I thought this was a, a really good uh, second film from Jordan Peele. Awesome. I also fucking loved this movie. <laughs> I thought it was phenomenal. I just, wow. I sat there after it ended like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I, really. I, I sat there saying fuck as well but i think for different reasons <laughs> <laughs> yeah lapita nuango is very hot so oh, she's amazing isn't she <laughs> jesus and you got two of her that's right except one of them is kind of weird looking and wears a red jumpsuit that's the crazy we were talking about before. that's right that is, <laughs> and what do we already say don't <laughs> stick your dick in crazy <laughs> Those are the two things I told my son when we had the talk. Wrap it before you tap it. Oh, Don't Jesus stick your dick in crazy. That's probably the worst talk ever given. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, talk to your mom. I thought I was going to give the worst talk ever. <laughs> oh. All right, Mark, play the spoiler drop and let's just get at it. There is no way to talk about this without spoilers. So. Spoiler alert. I had seen the future and I had to prevent it. All right, take us through it, Mark. What do you got? So, yeah, so the the movie plays out, the beginning of the movie kind of plays out pretty much like the trailer does. Uh, there's a family who is going on vacation, uh, going to the beach for a little while. Husband, wife, two kids uh, going to the beach and are going to a vacation home. Later on, as they're in the home, a family appears outside of their door and kind of makes their way into the house. From there, the family sees that the, that the people that are trying to break in look just like them and are doppelgangers uh, of themselves. So now they have to figure out a way to fight this other family and get out of the house. I thought this movie was going to be all about the house invasion. As soon as the family showed up and they broke their way into the house, I was assuming that that's what the whole movie was going to be about. I had no idea that it was going to expand outwards. Uh, so what did you guys think of the, at least the, the beginning of the story, the setup between the family going on vacation and then the flashbacks of young um, Adelaide when she was a kid. Uh, let's start with, uh, let's start with Steve. Uh, well, I just want to say when I said it was not what I expected, yep. you just nailed what I was talking about. I thought this was going to be an entire movie of home invasion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, you know, the, the end of this movie was going to be them getting away from this family somehow from the house. Yep. Um, so for it to not be that uh, completely, I mean, they, they stopped being in the house after like 15 minutes. I don't even know if it was 15 minutes that they were in the house. So I was very surprised at that. And I was like, wow, this is this is deeper. This has more levels than I thought it was going to have. Um, and then when it goes to the flashback of the young girl um, or of Adelaide when she was um, a kid, I was just like, wow, what a, what a shitty dad this guy is. <laughs> right. And he is the shittiest dad ever. Holy it was cow. the 80s, though. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I mean. I mean, and the girl, she wasn't very smart walking onto a dark beach on her own either. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it was pretty cool. I, there were some, there, this movie just, there were some things about this movie that just didn't connect for me. Like they left, and, and I know there was, they left things open to interpretation and things like that, but there were lots of things, parts of this movie that I just didn't feel that were connected to one another. Mm -hmm. But as far as the beginning goes, yeah, the beginning was cool. All right, Joey, what did you think about the beginning of the? <laughs> I I thought the movie started off fantastic. Um, right when it just starts, like the music and the rabbits. Yeah. Um, me and Janine are both like, oh, we're already fucking scared. <laughs> that felt like very um, classic horror movie opening. Right. We're always like, we're always like, fuck. And then yeah. all the stuff with the girl at the carnival, like you just know, like something awful is gonna happen. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she's like wandering off. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> turn around. And like her father's like playing whack a mole and completely ignoring her. I'm like, pay attention to your kid, goddammit. <laughs> it's a horror guys, movie. <laughs> did you guys realize the twist at the very beginning? No, I, I figured it out probably about five minutes before they revealed it. And I only figured it out because there was a shot from the trailer that hadn't happened in the movie yet. Oh, right. Yeah. I didn't watch trailers. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm pretty jealous of you, Steve, for not watching the trailers because yeah. that one shot that they put in the trailer, that that gave away the clue like right from what, the beginning. What, what was it? Because I still haven't seen the trailer. It's uh, when a young girl is looking into the mirror and she sees the other young girl yeah. uh, with her back to her. And then she turns around. Yeah. The young girl her. out of the mirror grabs Oh, the original they show girl. that? Yeah, and puts her hand around her throat. Like, they show her choking oh, her. So that I, is fucked up. So you know that at some point, and they don't show that in the movie until, like, towards the end of it. But you know if you watch the trailer at some point, that little girl in the mirror is going to attack the, the main oh, girl. Well, what a but, shitty thing. I was still thinking, all right, maybe she attacks her and she gets away. Maybe she attacks her and she whoops her ass and leaves her there, like... That's why oh. she's mad. So, I I mean, it, it wasn't a full giveaway, but just knowing that that hadn't happened yet. Right. And then starting to put the pieces together for what we're watching, then I could figure out what the ending was. All but, right. So, there were a couple of times. Sorry to cut you off, Joe. There were a couple of okay. times. If I would have known that, I would have I would have known the twist within a, a half an hour, 45 minutes of that movie. Because there were a couple of times where the mom is defending her family. She has to kill people. Yep. So she kills she kills one of the doppelganger twins of the of uh, their friends in their like mansion, and she kill when she kills her own doppelganger at the end, she ma- makes these like grunting sounds, mm-hmm. like she's almost become like I I was almost thinking like is she becoming one of them? Is like is it a virus? Is it a is she catching some type of is it contagious? What's happening? Because why would she be grunting like them? Because she was only she was almost becoming animalistic. At certain points when she was like uh, when she was killing people, when she was defending mm-hmm. her family. Yeah. And they were they all besides her, Ellen Doppelganger, they all communicated by like groaning or grunting. Right. So if I would have seen I, I probably would have put it together at that point because I was already thinking it. I was already kind of thinking, like, is she becoming one of them? Yeah. Oh, man, I can't believe they showed that. Yeah. I, I only realized the I only realized it when she realized it in the van driving away when she when she gets that surprised look on her face like she just figured it out i was like holy shit it's the other girl <laughs> but uh yeah i thought the opening was, was fantastic you know as a father it's tough to watch stuff like that sometimes oh. i don't know if you're the same way steve but yeah absolutely i'm absolutely. like wanting to stand up and scream at the movies the, the screen like turn around get the fuck out of there mm-hmm. like, but uh i thought that was good i I thought everything with the family was great. I loved uh, M'Baku. <laughs> <laughs> Winston That's Duke. who that was. I knew I recognized him. Playing a completely opposite character. I loved all his dad jokes. <laughs> he reminded me of me. Uh, <laughs> messing around with the kids with goofiness and goofy jokes and stuff. I loved it. Um, and then when the family shows up in their driveway, even though, they again, that's a shot they had shown in the trailer, that was still like terrifying. <laughs> I loved this movie until the end. And um, the dad, Mbaku, uh, I don't know what his name was in the movie. Uh, what was it? Gabe. It was. Gabe. He, he kind of brought the tension down for me a little bit with his jokes. Like, there were some scenes where you were really, really on edge and really stressed out. And that's what I like about horror movies. And, you know, he made jokes about, I'm never getting a boat again. That's the last time I got a boat. Um, and then like those kind of jokes kind of brought the tension down and I didn't want the tension to be down. You know what I'm saying? I, I kind of needed it. Cause when they were all being confronted by them and he's like, you can take my wallet, you can take the boat. And the daughter's like, nobody wants the boat. <laughs> no, but that wasn't like that. That's not even the point that that wasn't even a part of the movie that I was talking about. Cause that was, he literally thought that they were there to rob them. Right. Yeah. And, and his daughter was like, you moron. That's not why they're fucking here. Um, but like after they beat everybody up and they, you know, after he kills the his own doppelganger, he walks back into the house. He goes, I'm done with boats forever or something like that. And I'm like, yeah. ah, stop with the little jokes like this movie up until the end. This movie was was very, very up high up there on my on my horror list. Uh, but then, you know, like his his uh, little jokes here and there just kind of brought me down. But that that didn't affect the, how, how much I like this movie at all, though. So what do you guys think of uh, their wacky neighbors? Uh, Elizabeth <laughs> with Tim and, uh... from Tim and Eric. <laughs> 
Yeah, I never watched him and Eric. I have no idea who that guy is. I thought he, oh. I thought he did a really good job as both characters. Uh, but what did you guys think of him? Um, I thought they were fine. I mean, they played a pretty good, typical, you know, rich family that hates each other, I guess. Mm-hmm. That was a good um, reveal that wasn't ruined by the trailers, was that it wasn't just people that look like their family. It was everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't I, see that coming either. Because I was expecting them to show up at the door and ask to get let in, and now we've expanded the cast of people being attacked by these four doppelgangers. I was not expecting their doppelgangers to show up and just kill them within seconds. So. Mm-hmm. And that's the part of the movie where I got like really invested in it because it, mm-hmm. it completely changed from what I was thinking, and now I had no idea where it was going. And I'm like, all right, what, whatever it is, whatever is going to happen in this movie, I am. I'm there for it. I'm ready. I love the way that the whole thing unraveled. I didn't quite, I do have to watch it again though, because there is that part in the third act where uh, there's the big exposition drop where they're fighting each other. Uh, the two Lapita characters are fighting each other in a, in that room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she explains what's going on, but I'm like, my brain is like still trying to work to figure it out on my own that I missed a lot of that stuff. So I do How about have- that fucking fight between them where, um, I don't know know what to call them. (laughs) The The, red. Yeah. The red version or the, the shadow people. Yeah. The uh, the tethered version, the tethered version. That's it. It is. She's just like completely nonplussed. And, uh, Adelaide is like throwing everything she has and is swinging the, uh, poker at her and she'll miss. And she just like steps right out of the way, step, grab her and throw on the ground. Mm -hmm. And like, like it was nothing like, Oh my God. And you could feel everybody in the theater. Like, like it was just clawing their seat, like hit her, hit her, come on! <laughs> and she couldn't get her. It was that was really well done. I think that whole explanation of what it was, because you're waiting for it the whole movie. You, you, the the entire two hours or whatever. You're like, oh, I can't wait for them to kind of explain what it is that's you know making these doppelgangers or the shadow people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I thought the explanation was way too intricate, and I think we needed to see some of it. Maybe yeah. as she was telling it, maybe throw some flashbacks in of the scientists because apparently these were these were science made people, correct? It, it wasn't supernatural. Yeah, that's what I got out of it. That there, it was a, an experiment gone right. wrong. But yeah, I, so like I, I think I needed to see like a flashback of a lab, and they're making people in the lab, and mm-hmm. maybe the the shadow people revolt. Something to kind of really sell it for me. That, that that's kind of where it lost me a little bit. And then the whole hands across America thing lost me a little bit too. Because <laughs> was this is this a like a metaphor for homeless people? Kind you of. Know? Oh, yeah, it could be. You could know, be. like these are like the shadow people are the people that we don't see, but they're human just like us. Well, that and... was the only form of protest she had ever seen in her life before she got dragged down. There was the commercials for Hands Across America, so that's why she right. set that up as their demonstration. Right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is a whole, like, you know, metaphor for homelessness in America. Just like, like she just like she loved Michael Jackson, so everybody had a red suit and one glove. Yep. Right. <laughs> That's right. I was, oh, I never even noticed that. <laughs> yeah, like that. Um, but, yeah, like, there were certain certain things that I, after that, I was kind of questioning, like, um, after they after they killed Lupi, um, Lupita's red character. Yeah. Um, and then they just drive away. There are still thousands of people holding hands across America. What happens after that? You yeah. know? Yeah. They don't really show like where they're like, what their plan is, where they're going to go. They said Mexico. Um, yeah. but you don't really know like who else is out there and what else is happening other than, uh, the helicopters flying above. But I, I yeah, I thought it was, you know, I, some answers I just don't want. <laughs> I'll just, just take the movie as it is. Um, but it will be, I think it'd be really interesting to watch it again, knowing the twist, knowing that the red character was actually the little girl from the beginning. Cause now yeah. you kind of, you see it from her point of view. Um, and I think it, it, it could be a whole different experience watching it again, watching it for a second time. Yeah. I just have so many like science questions about it. Like I don't you mind. Can't, you, you, can't, you can't think about that stuff. It's, it's no, not I a know, movie but... made for you to think about that stuff. I know, I know, but if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, you have to have some type of reasoning behind it. But for how me. much of what the red character said was even true? Because she was talking about how they don't have any souls and God left them and they're just weird people that live in underground, but her doppelganger went up to the surface and 
I don't know, after a few months of therapy, he was fine, got yeah. married, had kids. Yeah, she was fine. And that that was something that I really enjoyed about the movie. I love that that depth that, like, you know, she she went down into the shadow land and they thought she was special because she had the ability to talk. And the, the reason she had the ability, the ability to talk was because she was born on the other side. Right. Um, and I thought that was really, really great writing. And I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a stickler for, for like logic in movies sometimes when, you know, there are certain times where you got to throw logic out. But I thought if you if you're gonna go the science route, you gonna you kind of have to have some backup for it. That's all I'm saying. But I really I did really enjoy this movie for the most part. Yeah, it would mean it was nature versus nurture. She, you know, the doppelganger went up to the surface and got care from psychiatrist, and I guess her mom was loving. Maybe her dad needed a smoke, but um, and she was able to get married and have kids and live a normal quote unquote normal life. The other one got thrown down the escalator and spent her entire life planning. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that was. (laughs) And it goes to show you that, like, you can reform someone who's been in that type of situation, like a homeless person. You can take them and help them rebuild their lives. And it's just as easily that quick. You can your life can be ruined and be you can go from having everything to having nothing. You know, like the more I think about the homeless aspect of it, the more it fits. But Mm -hmm. maybe I'm just creating that in my own head. No, I think this movie is open for a lot of different interpretations. And I definitely think that's one of them. Um, Mm -hmm. I think you can also look at it as uh, immigrants. Coming to America, there was one line where they said, "Why, why would they be treated special, or why, mm-hmm. what makes them special?" And they're like, "Because we're Americans." Um, right, right, right. So, yeah, I thought of it as being, you know, we, you know, Americans have like everything that that we have, we get to take advantage of. And then there's people who live in other countries that are kind of like ours, but not quite, who want to get over here, want to be on the other side of it. I don't know. I don't know. There, there's a, there's a, a lot of. I think if you watch this movie like a couple of times, you'll get different. You'll find different things in it. But I think as a whole, as a beginning, like, you know, start here in here, I think mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a pretty solid movie. If they would have if they would have made it supernatural. Yeah. That way I don't have to ask questions because <laughs> it's magic or whatever. Like and who fed I, the rabbits? <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, well, she, they were eating the rabbits. Well, yeah, but yeah, there, I, there had to be enough rabbits down there for, uh, you know, six yeah. million doppelgangers to eat. <laughs> right. And like, why are they all um, like mimicking the behavior of the people on above? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like during the carnival, like there were, there was a couple feeding each other, you know, like cotton candy and like underground, there was the same couple, but yep. a shadow version doing the same act action. Like if you, if you would have just told me like, this is supernatural and there's no explanation for it. I'm like, yeah, cool. It's magic. We don't have to explain shit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I thought, um, I, my whole theory watching this movie is I thought they were like, are like actual legitimate shadows, like come to life. Like mm-hmm. science has made a way to take because the only way we have shadows is if there's some kind of light on us. So the only way that we are able to cast a shadow. And I thought so they just... don't forget that uh, the red version was like, yeah, they made us, and then they were like, yeah, this is this isn't working out, and they just left them there. <laughs> They're like, oh, we made six million clones. We're just gonna leave them in a tunnel. And then they made sure that their clones married the right other clones and had the same exact kids. You're That's, thinking it. You're over. Yeah, you're thinking about it too much. I know, dude. If you, just made it supernatural. if you put that logic into horror movies, you will not like any horror movies at all, man. Right. But then don't <laughs> then don't put science into the horror movies. How did Jason's boat get from Crystal Lake <laughs> to, to Manhattan. Manhattan when a lake is a landlocked <laughs> body of water? Magic. Exactly. Exactly. Don't have to think about it. <laughs> uh, I will like to say there was one small aspect that I actually really loved about this movie that had nothing to do with the movie itself, nothing to do with the plot itself. But I always play this game whenever I watch like uh, uh, because I love comic book movies so much. Whenever I watch like other movies, I see actors and go, OK, that's not Christian Bale. That's uh, Batman, you know, or mm-hmm. that's not Jack Nicholson. That's the Joker. You know, I, I immediately connect the actors to the comic book characters in this movie. I was able to go look. There's M'Baku from Black Panther. Uh, there's uh, Black Manta from from uh, Aquaman. <laughs> there's Starfire from uh, Titans. Who was Starfire? She the... was the mom. Which the mom, mom. The ori- the Adelaide's mom. Oh, I, I, I just want look at her. I just want my daughter back. Where was Black Manta? He was the father. He was the guy who was ignoring his daughter. <laughs> oh, I didn't see the, their faces at all. Yeah, you get a really good look at him. Um, well, you get a, you get a really good look at him at the beginning, but you get a look a really good look at him when they're doing the uh, the shadow versions of him. Or the, the gotcha. tether, the tether versions of them. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and Lupita's from Black Panther too. So I'm like, yeah, all right. This is great. <laughs> the the little comic book nerd in me loved that aspect. 
<laughs> All right. So, All right, final so we got I, I got some questions for you guys before oh, we shit. give our score. All right. Okay. So the first one is, if you were going to get Jordan Peele to make a superhero movie, what superhero movie would you want him to make, Mark Ellis? Oh, man, it's tough. Like, every superhero movie that I've wanted, I've pretty much gotten already. Uh, I would say, oh, you know what I would want? I would want a live-action Miles Morales story. That's what I would okay. want. And Jordan Peele That's doing a, Miles Morales. That's okay. a great choice, dude. Well, now you have to pick something different because Mark took it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Um, hmm. How about the new Green Lantern kids? There you not, go. Not Hal. Not, not, in, not that group. The new group with Jessica Cruz. Mm-hmm. And I don't know the other Green Lantern's name. Oh, the, the Muslim guy, right? Yeah. Oh, fuck. What is his name? Don't know his name off the top of my head. Can't remember. I, think I haven't be read it. Wow. Because I want to see a good Green Lantern movie. And they're young. I think that would be interesting. Hmm. There's some psychological stuff going on there because that uh, Jessica Cruz is kind of messed up in the head. Right, right. She has anxiety or something. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I think that might be cool. Hmm. Well, I would say Marvel Studios and Jordan Peele present Blade. Oh, that'd be cool too. Oh, shit. That would be good. <laughs> that'd be really good. Back up the Brinks truck, Disney. <laughs> Let's get this shit done. Oh, damn it. Why didn't I think of that? That's good. <laughs> That's real good. I think both of your choices are very, very good. All right. Now, the second one is a little more sillier. The inevitable sequel to us is going to come out. What would I, and I, I'll get, I'll go, <laughs> what would you title the sequel to us, Steve? Them. Okay. Oh, that's good. Mark Ellis? Uh, just the two of us. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's good. <laughs> um, 40 years in the future. The United States military loses contact with Santa Cruz Beach and must send in the Marines to find out what happened in us. <laughs> <laughs> is that U.S. apostrophe S? S? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what about us versus them? Oh, oh, yeah. There you go. So that would be the doppelgangers fighting giant ants. It's a deep cut. It's <laughs> a sorry. deep cut. Um, so I also proposed this question out to our Patreons looking for some answers. I immediately took two us too furious off the table because that was too easy. <laughs> <laughs> and I did get some responses. So Maggie, uh, our good friend Maggie and Patreon, who is from the Rock Candy podcast, one of my favorite shows, uh, also suggested them right there on the same uh, wavelength. Uh, Brent from Home Video Hustle, another one of our favorite shows, and another one our Patreon suggested Step Up, the number two, Us. <laughs> uh, Paul from uh, the Countdown Podcast, another of our favorite podcasts, um, who's also a Patreon, suggested Us Two Electric Boogaloo. Of course. I don't know if that would involve like a doppelganger teen center. Hopefully breakdance battles. I'm not sure. And John from Pina Comics chimed in with use. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's like Italian doppelgangers or yeah, something. Yeah, it's the Brooklyn family. And then finally, and this one actually is really funny. Uh, so Wizard senior political correspondent Amanda, another one of our fine Patreons. Uh, I posed a question to her and she <laughs> actually stole, which was my first thing I was going to say. And I didn't say it to her already. She just came up with it. On her own, which shows the wavelength of somebody I've been friends with for a long time. Uh, us too, but the two is the S in us. And the entire soundtrack is U2 music. <laughs> 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 and that was my original uh, choice, but I had my backup, thankfully. So fantastic. So now that we've done enough goofy questions about us and talked about the movie, let's get a score out of five. Steve, you're the guest. What'd you give it on a scale of zero to five with zero being the worst and five being the best? I give this a three and a half. It was very good. Oh, you're a tough grader. I told you that I'm a science teacher and the science threw me <laughs> off. Fault me for that, but that's, <laughs> but that's it. But it was still very good. It was, it, if it, if it, if they would have said it was a supernatural thing, I would have given it a four and a half. Okay. So there, you don't really, it's not scientific enough that there's a giant underground complex filled with clones eating rabbits only <laughs> protected by a single door and an escalator? Exactly. Okay. Uh, Mark Ellis. Yeah, I would give it, I, 
I'm going to have to watch it again so I can fully absorb everything that I want to in a movie. But from the first viewing, I give it a four, four out of five. Oh, I want to give it a four. I, I'm pretty sure when I, if I watch it again, it's going to be bumped up to a 4.5. But for right now, four. All right. Well, I guess I am going to be the outlier here because I am going to give us a five out of five. Whoa. I thought this movie fucking ruled. I know, and I agree with Steve. It has problems. If you sit down and start thinking about the story a little too much, uh, the cracks start to appear. Yep. But sitting in the theater watching it, it was scary. It was funny. It was well made. It was well directed. It was fucking awesome. I loved it. I'd be stunned if this is not in my top five movies of the year in December. So I give us a five out of five. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask, what did you guys think of, like, exactly how scary the movie was? Like, were you, like, because I know there wasn't really any jump scares, but did it feel like a real scary movie to you? I thought it was I thought, scary. <laughs> I thought the scary stuff was in the trailers, like mm-hmm. in the commercials. Yeah. Like, I saw, like, the teaser of the, of the stuff in the house, and I thought that was the scariest stuff that you saw. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a I'm a big punk when it comes to horror movies. Like, I watch, <laughs> I watch them with my, my hands over my eyes. I wasn't scared at all during this whole movie at all. It was not scary at all to me at all. I mean, it was it was suspenseful and intense, yeah. uh, but yeah, I wasn't scared at all. I, it was just really tense. Yeah, you know, like yeah. especially yeah. not knowing what was going on in the movie because I didn't read any spoilers. You know, so like not knowing who's going to survive, who's going to make it through this. Are the kids going to die? Is that girl going to get kidnapped? Is that kid going to get you know? So it was like really scary. But I think someone in the family should have died to make it a little bit more have a little bit more consequence. Someone should have sacrificed themselves or someone should have. I think someone I thought it might have been a little bit better if someone in the family, you know, bit it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know who because they were all great. Yeah, all I didn't want any of them to die. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, want them, I think I, I think want them all to I want them all to live. I think the dad could have died. And no, it could have made an impact on the movie. Not because I didn't like him. I, 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 no, I liked him. <laughs> <laughs> he played he played a buffoon, though, at some points, didn't he? Like yes. He was very he was he was very uh, incapable of certain things. Yeah, and that yeah. was great because you expect him to be a badass from watching Black Panther. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I, I really I really enjoyed this movie. I really really did. Awesome. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna wrap it up. Let's get some recommendations for the listeners out there. Steve, recommend something for the listeners, and then tell us where they can find you weekly on Dead or a Podcast recommend i recommend titans on the dc universe app that show no no good i like uh, that show that might think that's okay you liked us a lot more than i did so yeah um check <laughs> check out titans on dc universe app and you can find dinner in a podcast uh pretty much everywhere you listen to podcasts you can find us on itunes and google play um spotify uh podbean uh stitcher radio all those cool places uh we are part of the ihop network the international house of podcast network because we have uh, some people from overseas in that network as well so take a listen to them and that's really it just give us a shot if if you like uh if you like so wizard you'll definitely like us sweet and uh, we agree we wouldn't have you on the show if we didn't like your show so uh definitely check them out markellis what do you got for the listeners this week uh yeah i mentioned before short term 12 on amazon i also started watching into the badlands uh, a show that i meant to start watching a few years ago when they uh, when it premiered uh the thing is it comes on like late sunday nights and it's this is way too much to really absorb at that time but the show is actually really good it's really really good i've already burned through like two seasons of it it's it's like a comic book movie it's like it kind of reminds me of the matrix it's like a comic book world that's not based on any comic book at all uh, there's violence, there's kung fu, it's bloody as hell, and you get assassins wearing 19th century bowler hats, which uh, you don't see every day. So uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out Into the Badlands, I think the final season is starting soon. Uh, it's on Netflix now, and it's uh, it's really good. It's really, really good. I can uh, second that. It is a really good show. Awesome. Well, I will recommend everybody goes to SoWizardPodcast.com, where they can find the podcast every week. Links to all our social media accounts on the right-hand side of the page. Movie reviews, streaming picks, and so much more. So wizardpodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
PodCoin now and just about any other podcatching app under the sun. You listen to your pods there. We will be there. Don't forget to check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash so wizard podcast. Monetarily support the show each month and get exclusive extra episodes of the podcast and more. Check out our YouTube channel. Search So Wizard Podcast on YouTube. We got new content every week straight from Adam Wallyhawk. And I will recommend that you jump onto Netflix and check out the new movie that is the story of Motley Crue called The Dirt. It's out now? Yeah, it just came out this week. Oh, awesome. Yep, because guess what, guys? That's what we're going to be talking about next week on the podcast. So it'll be all metal all Motley crew next week on the show. Markellis is already teasing his hair. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> he says sarcastically into the microphone. <laughs> Joey's stuffing his socks into his pants. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But that's next week. This is going to do it for this week. Episode 242. So is your podcast in a row. I've been your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-hosts have been Steve direct from dinner in a podcast. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for being on. We really appreciate it. And the expert, Mr. Marquis Markellis Reagans. Everybody have a good week. If you haven't gone to see us, go check it out. Shout out to uh, Starfire and Black Manta. Wakanda forever. (laughs) I've been your host, Joey DiCarlo. This has been episode number 242 of the So Wizard podcast. Remember, friends, future events such as these may affect you in the future. We'll see you next week. Good journey. Good journey.